Welcome to Fit Strong Women Over 50 podcast, episode number 52. Hi, I'm Jill. And I'm Chris. And if you're wondering who Ellie is, you know, of becoming Ellie, she's the one that wrestled Thor when she was challenged to a match. Believe it or not, when she was re- was wrestling Thor, she won. So we decided, Jill and I, when we developed our Becoming Ellie community, when we were trying to figure out what to name it, we wanted to call it Becoming Ellie after the Norse goddess of aging because she was fit and strong, just like we want to be. Yes. <laughs> In today's episode, we are going to speak with Don Maloney, who is a wife, mother, realtor, and mostly vegan intermittent faster. Uh, so I've known Dawn for, I don't know, nine or 10 years. And she has dealt with her weight and health for quite a while. She says with 130 pounds fluctuation between her highest adult weights, Dawn knew she needed to find a sustainable eating and movement lifestyle to help her consistently live a healthy life through intermittent fasting, plus a nearly 100% vegan lifestyle She has finally found the balance she wanted. Let's go to the podcast. Dawn, you look fantastic. You look great. Thank you. I I know you've had quite the journey with your weight Mm -hmm. and your health. And I'm just so impressed because I know how hard you've worked at it. All right. The first question is, do you mind telling me how much weight you've lost? Well, at this time, I don't know an exact answer. Okay. But I, I know I have lost... 50. Okay. But I don't weigh myself now because I was seeing changes, but nothing on the scale. And it was depressing me. Okay. So now I'm going by what am I getting smaller in my clothes? You know, clothes. Yeah. Clothes getting bigger. I'm getting smaller. Okay. All right. I know I've lost at least 50. Okay. I don't know whether you want to start with what you've tried in the past or what you're doing now, but can you sort of give us some idea of your journey? Sure. Yeah. The the laundry list, right? Yeah. I think the first time I ever tried a diet was when I was just out of high school. Okay. And so, you know, the list is super long. Right. But probably not in chronological order. I have tried paleo. I have tried the HGH where you're taking drops and it's human pregnancy hormone. It's terrible. And you have like 500 calories a day. Oh, right. So you get – is that – what drops or HCG? Injections? HCG. H- I, I did drops. Okay. Uh, yeah, under the tongue. Okay. Then I've done Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, Way Down Workshop. I would lose weight on all these different things, and there's lots more that I've tried, like cabbage soup diet. All right. Yeah, that's <laughs> well, a popular everybody one. Everybody <laughs> has tried that one. <laughs> and, and then try where you eat just specific foods. There's a there's a long list of different diets where you do things like that and um, taking different supplements, shakes, and, you know, powdered things and so all kinds of things. And then in 2016, end of 2016, that's when I started eating vegetables, grains, legumes, and fruits. And that's when I started losing a lot of weight. Vegetables? Grains, legumes, and fruit. Mm-hmm. So that's basically a uh, vegan. Basically vegan, right? Okay. And no, along with that, no oil, no sugar, no flour. I really don't drink much alcohol. No alcohol. So and very little salt. So what was happening was I started losing weight right away because it was calorie restricted, and I was very excited. And my husband joined me in this. It was a lot of uh, okay. a lot of good changes. Okay, so so both of you did this, mm-hmm. and that was in 2016? Yeah, we really started after a trip to California in 2017. It had so, really good results. It's, what, 2020 now? hmm So you've been doing it at least three years? Mm-hmm, right. Okay, so you you are still eating a vegan diet? Based? Yeah, not 100% now because okay. I started to have some some issues, and, you know, I can go over what that is. But I found that it was still calorie, like reducing your calories. And so it was slowing down my metabolism. Oh. So the weight loss was going down and then it 
ground to a halt. Okay. And I didn't know why. So, you know, just really being a very clean eating. My health was really good, all kinds of really good things, but no weight loss. And that's a lot of chopping not to lose any weight. So I had to find <laughs> out what to do. Okay. Just, a lot of chopping as in chopping those vegetables. That's it. A lot of chopping. So <laughs> definitely a lot of chopping. Very frustrating. Vegetables. I'm, I'm going to just... Oh, okay. okay. Vegetables, so, grains. Mm-hmm. So grains, rice. Rice, quinoa, millet. Yeah. Okay. Things like that. All Seeds. Right. Fruit. And Fruit. what mm-hmm. was the other one? Legumes. Oh, legumes. Mm-hmm. So lentils, chickpeas, kidney beans, navy beans, bean, bean, beans. So you did that and you're still eating that way pretty much? For the most part, yeah, because I feel so good eating that way. Okay. But now that's not the – my goal with eating that way is not weight loss. It is health because right. like I, I'm, not, I'm not on any medications. Wow. And I have really healthy blood pressure and my skin is clear. Yeah, you look great. Thank you. But what I didn't realize was a few things which we can get into later. But when you are doing a calorie deficit, your body says, okay, well, we must have a problem. I want to be at this weight. She's not eating that much food. Better slow down the metabolism. You know the show The Biggest Loser? Yeah. You know they never have a reunion. Because they've all gained weight back. (laughs) (laughs) And the reason is mainly when you, you know, reduce your calorie intake so much, your metabolism slows down. And even when you start eating more, your metabolism doesn't go back up. So if you've reduced your metabolism, so now you're burning 500 less calories a day. And the more you reduce your calories, the more it slows down. And then, well, okay, I'll just add it back in. And it doesn't keep up. That is a recipe for gaining weight. Right. So when I had initially lost the 50 or so pounds I lost, then the weight was starting to creep back on. And I thought, wow, I'm eating so clean. How can this be happening? This is, this is not right. Right. <laughs> in the one program I was in, it's called Unlimited Weight Loss. And mm-hmm. it's uh, pioneered kind of by Chef AJ and John Pierre. Really great. I love them. And, Chef AJ. Mm-hmm. And who was the mm-hmm. other person? John Pierre. They were really good at promoting when you're done eating dinner, close the kitchen and then don't eat again in the morning till you're hungry. Well, I was a night eater and a comfort eater and an emotional eater. And when I uh, have a very stressful job and I have to take care of parents and it's like, "Mm, I'm a stress eater. So that was my comfort. So I was like, well, I can't really quit eating after dinner. Okay. And what I didn't know was a couple of things your body likes to not eat food at night and whatever you eat at night most times is just going to get stored as fat unless it's some circumstance I'm not aware of because your your pancreas says okay good night we're not doing anything else we'll just have to store that till later okay so hello fat storage after just staying at the same level for like oh gosh a year and a half I was so frustrated one day I had been eating perfect for like 30 days And I wasn't weighing myself because I thought, I'll know I'm losing weight. I had a little pain in my hip. I thought, well, you know, hey, my body's probably restructuring. I'll go ahead and step on the scale. Nothing. Flatline. Perfect eating, 30 days. And I got really frustrated. And I told my husband, it's like the only way I lose weight is if I fast. Because I had gone uh, in 2018, fasted for five days at a facility, and then had uh, five days of recovery and I lost 15 pounds in 10 days. And I felt wonderful. It's really good. But that was very expensive. But you went somewhere. I so went somewhere. Yes. Yeah, so you d- didn't I just- don't, yeah, I don't recommend fasting on your own for any more than like a day or two. It's terrible. So what happened was I was very frustrated. And you know, when I said it's a lot of chopping not to lose any weight. Right. I probably own every piece of equipment possible to chop vegetables and cook them and all that. <laughs> the food processor and the chopper. So anyway, what I did was I was so angry and I'm crying. And um, I typed in on Google and I just, all caps, which doesn't make any difference on a search, but it did to me. (laughs) Vegan diets don't work. And um, I found Dr. Jason Fung. Oh, yeah. Are you familiar with him? Yes. Okay. And I wasn't at all. Okay. And so he explained that if calories in and calories out was it, then everybody would be able to lose weight, but it doesn't work. And here's why. It's a hormonal problem. (laughs) 
insulin is up when you eat and insulin stops you from accessing your stored fat. Okay. So he was talking about intermittent fasting. Once I learned why you should stop eating after dinner or during, a, you know, for a set amount of time, like 16 hours or 14 hours, right. and what happens with your body before you wake up, why you're not going to starve to death right. because your body's smart enough not to starve you. That's when I started doing intermittent fasting in about November. And then I started getting smaller. Quit weighing at the beginning of this month because I was like, that's not the only gauge. I'm going down sizes. I also found I could lose weight eating whatever I wanted, but I didn't feel good. So like I'm juicing and eating vegetables and everything, and I'm really happy. Okay. So, I mean, there is that too. It's not mm -hmm. just... It's not just the fruits, vegetables, well, grains. Or, and no, yeah, but also yeah. you want to be a healthy weight, but there is more to Absolutely. the way we eat than trying to be a certain weight. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. It's there not the health. number on the scale. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Right. So eating a basic vegan diet, mm -hmm. even if you've added something, some things back in, mm -hmm. makes you feel good. Right, right. The only reason that I've added more things in is right now at our house, we have, my mom is on a renal diet mm. and there's only certain things she can eat. And my husband is working on getting his insulin down and he has to stay relatively low carb. So we have to watch that. And I don't want to cook three meals for everybody. So I will eat with them. But I really am looking forward to not eating any meat at all. I don't do dairy because it does not agree with me at okay. all. So that's an easy one. In fact, today I drove past a transport truck with cows on it. One had his nose sticking out. I was like, Aww. I can't eat this. <laughs> Yeah, that is the that is the problem with <laughs> terrible. But anyway, my husband joined me on the intermittent fasting journey about the last week in November, and in two months he was off his diabetes meds. Wow! So now you used to take medications? No, I, I oh, no, never, never had did. To. No, okay. but but I was pre diabetic. Okay, my. Uh, A1C was just about outside okay. of the so range. So you were getting the, you need to do something. Right. Or right. And weird things were happening. I, I started growing skin tags. I, I was falling, like regularly falling, just really? out of the blue. Yeah. And I wouldn't know why. In fact, I had no idea that those were all symptoms of being pre-diabetic, you know, having Falling? issues. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, having to do, I didn't either till I talked to uh, a couple of people who had been through that. Uh, I had no idea it was all tied together. I don't fall now. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but, but I was falling. The kids were like, mom, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. One time I, I fell when I was pumping gas. It, it was just like so awkward. And it was just like, I would be, it wasn't vertigo or anything. Huh. I'd step wrong or something. There was always an explanation, but it started happening really a lot. So, wow. yeah. So one of the things that was happening too is I was losing weight really well on the HCG diet. So that was working great. I was like, Oh, I got this, you know, calorie restriction. And I fell again, you know, okay. what I'm saying, and I split my forehead. It bruised my brain. That's the only thing we can figure that happened. And I had to be on a medication that was like an antidepressant or something because I just wasn't okay. It wasn't myself. Uh huh. And I gained 50 pounds. Oh, right. And so if anybody's been on an antidepressant, you know, I mean, if I didn't eat, I was miserable and I was gaining weight like, you know, <laughs> so stick it, right, <laughs> stick it over here. Many years ago, back when I was dealing with PMS issues, so, and I remember going to a doctor and saying, I am so depressed mm -hmm. every month Yeah, for like a week. I am horribly depressed. Right. So she gave me this antidepressant and she said, see if this helps. Yeah. <laughs> so I started taking it and it took me a little while to make the connection. But all of a sudden I realized I am suddenly like obsessed with driving past a donut shop and feeling like I need to stop <laughs> right? at the donut shop. And yes. I think I gained 20 pounds <clears throat> mm -hmm. in about a week. I mean, really. It comes on so fast. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And so I said, <clears throat> I can't take this. Yeah. So I know what yeah. you're talking about. That, right. And that was right. ages ago. I tried to just stop taking it and I couldn't because I was just, I just was not feeling right. And I thought, oh man, if I stay on this, I am going to weigh 300 pounds. This right. has got to go. So I was actively looking for when I could get off of it. Well, then when I got off of it, I weighed myself and I was, okay, now you weigh something you have never seen before. Now what do we do? And nothing worked. So by then... 
my metabolism was all kind of, you know, ruined from what I had been doing before. Right. And I was burning less calories. And I thought, okay, we were doing, well, we were doing juicing too. We had done juicing, but we had to quit doing that because my husband being diabetic, the carbs and sugars were just too much. Uh, yeah. Untenable. So yeah. then we went to paleo. And that was great. We both lost 25 pounds. But again, it was calorie restriction. And also, that's not really sustainable if you can't ever have bread occasionally or whatever. And it just it just didn't work well. What's been going on now has been really great because it's sustainable. If you have a day where you have an event or something and you're going to eat, you just eat. You're never cheating. You're setting it aside for a while. And then you just go back to it. Okay. So... One of the problems you have when you're somebody who's over 50 and you're trying to lose weight is there's a lot of things in your life that cause stress or whatever. And so you're not just fighting. It's not yourself. You, you have cortisol that's up high, which I guess triggers insulin. I'm not a doctor. I just know from what I've been reading that, you know, it's right. making sense with me. I know I'm in a time in my life where I am taking care of my mom and I'm still working, trying to help my husband stay healthy and take care of myself. And so, you know, I figure I'm fighting a lot of cortisol. Right. <laughs> so that's why some people, you know, they start just eating vegetables and they're fine. Next thing you know, boy, oh, boy, they dropped all this weight. But one thing I've noticed about people, if they do something where they're losing weight with the calorie restriction, and I'm sure you've seen it lots of times, they either gain it back or they just didn't have all the stress in their lives that we had. Right. And they're like, this is what I right. always do, so I'm fine. Right. And their body maybe doesn't go back to a set point. But you know, I've had five kids. I have lost weight. I have gained weight. My weight has fluctuated 130 pounds. Oh, wow. Right. So my body's been through a lot. And sometimes when you do certain things, your body's trying to heal. And maybe you just won't drop all the weight all the time. But what I can say is in, um, now I've done this for three months with the intermittent fasting and I have scars disappearing. Oh, wow. And I have, my sleep is so good. Like I actually get tired like a normal person and I can lay down and fall asleep. So you're intermittent fasting. People do different things. It's called right. intermittent fasting. So yes. what are you doing? I would say you could also call it time restricted eating. Right. You're only eating for so many hours a day. Some people do one meal a day, two meals a day. Mine varies all the time because if I am having a very stressful day and I know I would be stressed out more if I knew I couldn't have a snack or have something to eat. I'll have a longer window mm -hmm. to eat. But what I've noticed that I really like doing is just stopping a couple hours before I go to bed. And maybe that'll be really, I love doing like between five and seven and being right. done, then not eating until, I don't know, really maybe 12 or one. Okay. And that seems to be really good for me. So I will have like a anywhere from a four to a six hour window of, of eating. eating. Yeah. Okay. So that would be termed like 18, six, 18 fasting, right. six eating or 24, 20 hours fasting, four hours. Okay. Nap. So, you know, it's very peaceful. I think this is the most peaceful I have felt about food really? in my life. And yeah. How long did it take you? Did it take you time to adjust to not eating all day long? Yes. Yes, it really did. What I learned was I could do, I could easily do like uh, 14 hours and have 10 hours where I ate. And so then I would just kind of gradually do that. And then occasionally, like we were on a trip in mm -hmm. Puerto Rico and we were just like really tired from the trip and we both didn't feel like eating. So we did a 36 hour, we just didn't eat. No, oh, just okay. rested and hung out and you know, we weren't hungry. We were just tired. We just do kind of what fits. My husband every day pretty much does 20 hours or really? yeah, t between 20 and 23 hours because he just drinks coffee all day long, but I've never been a big coffee drinker. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> One of the best books I can recommend is Delay Don't Deny by Jen Stevens. And that is available as a audio book. So, okay. Delay but, Don't Deny. Mm -hmm. and, and Jen is G-I-N- and last name Stevens, S T E P H E N S. Okay. We'll put <clears throat> links to oh, these awesome. in the show notes. Good. So you also mentioned Dr. Fung. Dr. Jason Fung. And he, he promotes a different kind of fasting. And I feel his is harder because he is okay with you having some cream and some maybe bulletproof coffee while you fast because oh, that right. doesn't seem to affect your insulin. 
But what I found is if you ingest anything that has flavor or is food light, then it, for me, it raises your hunger. Oh. And so if you just let that sleeping dog lie, I am much more comfortable. So everybody is different. Uh, but when I started, I was doing alternate day fasting. Okay. And so I was, one day I would just eat like eight hours. And then the next day I would just have like a 500 calorie meal. There is a woman who's a nutrition, she's like the chief nutritionist at the wellness center at the Cleveland Clinic. Mm -hmm. And that's what she talks about. Is it's the, good. Like twice a week eating about 500 calories. Right. Don't. But that what she's talking about can be like a 5-2. Uh, so five days a week right. you eat normal and two days a week you do 500 calories. But my body seems to like to have the fluidity because, let's face it, we have so many issues with hormones. Some mm -hmm. days you can't just say, I'm doing this. Maybe that works for some people. Doesn't work for me. I'll be crying and I don't want to cry over food. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I like being happy and I feel so relaxed about doing this. It's the first time I feel like, okay, this is day, what is today, the 19th? Yes. This is 19th day in a row, no scale. And I have a really nice Renfo scale that I love because it tells your, you know, your body percentages yeah, and everything, yeah. your fat and all that stuff. <laughs> but that was determining if I had a good day or a bad day. Oh. So the only thing I have to do right this month is not step on the scale. And everything else is gravy. So, I mean, I really feel comfortable just saying, I'll know the changes. And see, that's what happened when I heard Jason Fung talking about in intermittent fasting. I thought, if he's right, then I'm going to know in seven days if this is working. So, I mean, I can do this for seven days. And um, in two weeks, I lost eight pounds. Oh, wow. And the scale had not been moving. And I thought, okay, this is working. Now, a lot of that was probably water. You don't lose fat that fast. But and this is not just so there are people who say well the reason why it works is because you again are restricting calories. Right, exactly. What you find is you don't have to restrict calories because I, I didn't go on the first two weeks I ate everything because I was like let's see Jason Fung what you have to say here. I mean I'm eating fast food, I am eating oh my buttered bread. I mean really. I was like whatever and I lost 8 pounds. I was like, okay. <laughs> This Because I wanted to test it, not just with vegetables, because I, I had had it. I was very angry when I started this. So, because I was very disappointed. I've been working at this for now, you well, know. Well, you were so happy years. with eating your vegetables. I know, because I was, you know, planning on good things happening. And after a while, you're like, hey, wait a minute. I really still have to lose a lot of weight. <laughs> so, I don't even want to tell the numbers. <laughs> it's just so bad. But the thing is, is that I just couldn't get out of, I was still in the, oh, oh, not obese category, uh, category, the, what is it? Extremely obese category, okay. eating vegetables. Oh, wow. And I was like, no, something's wrong. I just don't, this is not working. So as soon as I um, started intermittent fasting, I got into the other category. So I'm still in the obese category, but you know how that goes. Yeah, you can, yeah. One of the things that was amazing to me was just right away, second day or something, my sleep just was fantastic because I had been having trouble sleeping. And so, you know, you're talking about, well, you're just doing calorie restriction. So to go back to that, I was definitely not calorie restricting. Okay. So, I mean, I was getting... So you in. were eating a lot of calories mm -hmm. in your window. Yes, I was. So what was going on was I was just eating whatever I wanted, whatever I wanted. If I wanted to have the entire piece of cheesecake or whatever, and, uh, and I shouldn't eat dairy, so I got headaches and everything, but I was losing weight. <laughs> I was like, hmm, I don't have to pay this price. So then I went back to just eating more of like a paleo type diet, but I was still having bread. I was still have a sandwich because I mean, when you're eating just certain things, you really miss a sandwich. You really, you know, the stuff you grew up with. Right. So, I mean, I made a list of everything I liked and I was just eating it. I lost eight pounds. Okay. But then my body still really likes eating vegetables and it was happier there. So I'm happy with less salt. I'm happy with fruit juices, fresh juices and all that stuff. So I've gradually gotten back to that. But I went down a size and I was like, okay, not much has been moving in such a long time. It was a real gift. So that's just three months. What I've learned is I'm listening to my body a lot more. You know, if it's a day where I'm like saying, okay, I'm going to do a 36-hour fast, and then I'm so hungry. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I'm breaking this fast early. 
Okay, so you are doing then multi-day fasts. Well, Sometimes. 36 hours would be a, a day it's and like, a half. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Okay. So you, well, so you are doing some occasional yeah. fasting. Yeah. Not a lot of it. Most of the time, I think right now, if I, I use, um, what is the name of the app that I use? Life app. And it tells you what your fasts look like for, for the week and it averages how much time you've been fasting. So, I mean, I can tell you how much Life time. Life app? Uh-huh. It's free and it will tell you like how much you have been fasting. Like so far in my fasting career, I have fasted 1,597 hours. My longest fast is 36 hours. I've done a total of 93 fasts and I have spent 496 hours estimate in ketosis where I've been burning body fat. For for the most part, I'm pretty consistent. One of the things you find with intermittent fasting is you might gain weight right away because your body loves having the time off so it can heal. And that is is what started happening. I started, my scars started disappearing and my skin started clearing up Hmm. and my hair started growing back. (laughs) I was like, I love this. Okay. I can be okay without losing some weight. (laughs) Let's just let things happen on the inside. Um, My blood pressure is beautiful. And you're saying, so that happened when you started doing the fasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's gotten better as I got off the little joy ride I was on when I first started. (laughs) That was, that was pretty fun. I could see that. That would be pretty tempting. I had to prove it because he was like, no. So when your insulin is down, your body can access your fat stores. Okay. And he's all about how diabetes is reversible. And we had heard this. My husband was diagnosed in 2013, and they told us, you're going to be on this forever. It's right. progressive. You're familiar. No one told us that, you know, you could reverse it by changing your diet or losing weight. It was very upsetting to me. I'm actually still really upset with that. I feel like if anyone I get a chance to speak to, I'd like to tell them, this is a reversible disease. You can change it by diet and lifestyle changes, but not by calorie restriction and more activity. You're going to have to have intermittent fasting. You just need to have a break. It's so simple, but it takes a while to get used to it, like you said. And the being on the vegan diet didn't do that. No, it can do it, but it is a very restrictive lifestyle. And so it's not sustainable if you're not getting results. And if, and so if you stall out, it's not as humans, I just don't, think we can handle that much restriction forever. So that's why I really like finding out about intermittent fasting because you can have a piece of birthday cake once in a while. You don't have to be the person at the wedding who can't eat this or whatever. Right. You know, for some people, that's great. They don't want to eat certain things. But for us, that was always a deal breaker. He was able to come off of last month, come off of his metformin because he wasn't all the way getting insulin and everything. And he has added activity in because it isn't just about what you eat. He's in a place where he can get there. And I think people are starting to realize this about diabetes that, for example, Dr. Fung explains when people have gastric bypass, they get cured of their diabetes lots of times if they don't eat around the surgery, you know, because right. we've all met people who do that. Well, why? Because you lose the weight and you don't have the symptoms anymore. Well, if you can lose the weight and not be considered a diabetic anymore, type two, we're talking about not type one, type one, you have to, yeah, Yeah. that's a different problem. But um, then that means it's reversible. Not saying people should get surgery, but just saying light bulb, it's reversible. So anyway, we're just really thrilled with the results. And it seems like more good things are coming every day. But it takes a while to get used to eating this way. Mm-hmm. And you have to learn, oh, I'm not cheating. Oh, I can do this. And so. So do you try to do your fasting every day? Or is that something that you say, I'm going to do intermittent fasting all week and not on the weekend? Or Yes, I usually do every day, Monday through Friday. And then I am... Very relaxed on the weekend. Okay. So sometimes if I'm feeling like doing it, I will on the weekend. But 
I never have to have a cheat day because I'm allowed to just Eat not, whatever you want. Just not do anything today. It's like, okay, well, nothing really good will happen, but nothing really bad will happen. So right. okay. I won't gain five pounds of fat. I might gain five pounds of water right? because you retain water, but it goes away. You said it's not just about what you eat. What do you do for fitness? Do you do anything? Well, I'm wearing a Fitbit, and okay. so I'm supposed to be walking more, but my schedule's really erratic. So I will do some high intensity interval okay, a little bit. And I will also do stretching and I have a rebounder and I really love it. Okay. <laughs> but until I really don't want to do anything that's going to change my appetite until I am smaller. So I probably won't add a lot of exercise in. Remember when we ran the, um, well, ran, you ran the 5K and I walked the 5K. Oh, yeah, right, the right. Bunny one or whatever. Yeah, the <laughs> Hop for Hope. That's it. I really like to get into doing more walk run okay. type things. Yeah. But it's really rough on my knees and everything. I have to really work on inflammation. That's why I like the whole vegetable fruit lifestyle because it really does a good job on inflammation for me. Okay. So because when I also when I was at my highest weight, like I was taking one stair at a time. Uh for my daughter's wedding, I was using a cane. Oh. Yeah, it was bad. And one of the pictures I have when I was at my highest weight, I could barely walk from the car to the church for my friend's funeral. Oh my. It was awful. And I thought, I am killing myself. I don't know how to get out of this. So I feel really hopeful now because number one, I am far from where I was, but I feel like I can stay far from where I was and get closer to being who I am inside. Well, that's the important thing too, because that mm -hmm. yo-yoing up and down is cannot be good for you. It, it isn't. Um, when I was doing the HCG diet, um, oh, right. I messed I messed up my heart rhythm. Oh. Because it's such I've heard that strong is, calorie deprivation. My is that friend what it said, is? Yeah. My friends, well, it was for me. <laughs> my friend said, don't do that. You're going to mess up your heart and everything. I'm like, I have to lose weight. What? I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. And she said, it's not going to be good. And it wasn't. Do you work with a doctor? Just my doc. Yeah, my family doctor. Okay. Was, did all my blood work and everything. Okay. Um, two years ago. And she, I still, even though I had lost that, all that weight, I was still pre diabetic. So I was okay. still falling and still my vision was going cloudy. That was the other thing. Okay. So, you know, I had high blood pressure. My vision was going cloudy. Uh, I was, you know, my skin was a disaster. It was too dry. I was breaking out. It was just really a sad situation. Wow. So do you have a go-to quick, easy to make meal that you like? Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, I still, the easiest thing is just either to have some make a meat of any kind and then add a vegetable. That's my easiest dinner. <laughs> <laughs> make so, a meat. <laughs> make a meat. Pick a meat. Pick a meat. And um, yeah, because that's how I have to feed everybody at my house now. Okay. So because and and we usually usually it's salad and a meat and maybe a side dish of, dish of a vegetable. If I'm going to do just vegan, like just for me, then I really like to have rice over a big bed of greens and just basically open a can of beans and heat everything up. Maybe okay. put some salsa on it. It's basically homemade chipotle. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And I guess I was going to ask you if you have a favorite recipe that you can share, <laughs> would that be it? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, well, my favorite recipe is basically if you put your grains in an instant pot, so yeah. you can put rice, four cups total of rice and lentils. Okay. And then you do, does say, what did I say? Four cups? Did I say four cups? Four yes. cups. Four cups. Is that cooked? Nope. Four cups uncooked, Raw, uncooked rice and lentils, right? And you can do, and you could do millet, rice and grains, whatever. Okay. So, um, and then five cups of water. Okay. And then you put it in the instant pot. Okay. Um, it depends on how you like it. I usually like to do fifteen minutes, and then that's it. That's a lot. <laughs> that's usually your set for the week. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. I don't like to cook a lot. If and I'm then you just put. So then you have the right. You use that, and then you put the greens and the beans on top of it. Yeah. Or if you are serving your family, you cook the meat and Let, give them yeah. some meat with that. Right. And then right. a salad or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes it really simple, and they're getting balanced nutrition and it tastes wonderful. That's good. I don't even put. I usually don't put spices in it because I like 
a much more flavorful food than my mother does. Okay. So I have to keep it very nominal and no salt or anything. Everybody salts and right. seasons their own thing. Yeah, I love that over a bed of greens with some salsa and some beans and I'm set. That sounds good. It is good. Put some avocado on there. Yes, you could. Oh, except they, do you still do the low, f- no fat? Nope. Uh, uh, I, I'm a big fan of fat right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. So you could put some avocado on yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I end up missing is like the taste of sour cream, but it makes me feel so bad. I don't do it. So I love dairy on that. Like I would, I, love I was dairy. a huge, I, love I know. Butter. And yeah. All that. yeah. Butter doesn't bother me. So it must be, you know how some people can be allergic to, not allergic to, but sensitive to the lactose. Mm-hmm. And then there's like two different elements. You can eat cheese, but. And yeah, butter, and there's but something about butter. butter is primarily fat, mm-hmm. and a lot, you, so you don't have a lot of the proteins that you get in other dairy products. The casein or whatever, the different things, yeah. I guess. So, yeah. So, I usually, now that I'm doing this... I, I say that like I really know what I'm talking about. I've just That's what I've read. Both of us, yes. We're just working on, you know, <laughs> things we read on the internet now. <laughs> but it's nice because it's felt really good to be able to add back some butter, but I still do not like cooking with oil. I okay. don't like oil. It doesn't make me feel well. And I also, speaking of reading, a lot of people say that because it sits for so long, sometimes it's actually actually technically rancid. And that's rough if you have like leaky gut. So the thing is, a lot of these things, a doctor can't necessarily tell you you're an experiment of one, is what Jen Stevens says all the time. So you have to check what works for you. You know, maybe you would be okay having sweets on your fast or something, and you won't feel like you're starving in between. But then again, maybe you just need to eat whole foods and then your fast is easy if you're just not adding something with the, right. I mean, like a fruit flavor or a food or something. And it's just going so beautifully that I'm like, cool, this experiment's wonderful. I'm happy, happy. You can't buy happy. Well, that's true. You can. <laughs> so what's next for you? I think, well, right now I am mentoring people as they are fasting. Oh, okay. So because I feel like I have enough to encourage them, mm-hmm. you know, to continue. And I'm mentoring people who are changing how they eat. Okay. And I think it's really good. It's like when you teach something, then you need to get better at it. And right. you have an obligation to be better at it. Right. And uh, that's one reason I was so excited you were having me on the podcast to talk oh, about. Oh, okay. see, I was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. You know, it's food's very confusing for a lot of people. And that's one of the reasons I love Chef AJ and John Pierre, because John Pierre is all about speaking really kindly to yourself, especially if you've had an abusive background or something. And I had a really rough dad. Those things just play all the time and you don't realize the things you're saying to yourself. Right. And he's all about learning to be kind to yourself and, you know, be kind to others, be kind to animals, but be kind to yourself too. And Chef AJ is all about fighting food addiction because you have to eat, but certain foods that are highly palatable are very hard to break and they spike your insulin, they cause disease. And so she just has a whole philosophy and uh, she has a wonderful long list of videos on YouTube. Okay. You would probably really enjoy. I, I mean, I think they were really good for me. So the future... I, th- I think is going to be helping other people get out of no way out situations. Okay. And that would make me really happy because it, it's been so frustrating to learn that diabetes is a reversible thing and no one tells you that. And now we're seven years in and he's had so much nerve damage and everything that a lot of things could have been prevented if we would have known. Now, would we have accepted it? You know, the expression, when the student is ready, the teacher shall appear? Well, that's true. Yes, I can think of things in my life where I think that if I yes. had only known. But but we know now. We know now. And yeah. All right, so we made it to the lightning round. Oh, okay. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so these are quick, short, and you say whatever you want. It could be okay. a short long or long answer. I don't know right or wrong. Short. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Zumba or Pilates? Zumba. I love Zumba. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is one other thing I do. Okay. Bike, run, or swim? Swim. Nice. Broccoli or cauliflower? Broccoli. Love broccoli. Vegan or paleo? Vegan. Gym or park? Hmm. Depends on the company. Let's go with park. Okay. (laughs) Eggs or oatmeal? Eggs right now. (laughs) Okay. All right. Treadmill, Stairmaster, or elliptical? Treadmill. Wine or beer? Wine. Okay. Kettlebell or dumbbell? I like both, so I'm going to say both. Okay. (laughs) 
quinoa or rice? Mm, I also like both. Uh, but I would lean toward rice. Okay. Coffee or tea? Coffee. And if you drink coffee, do you put butter in it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried it. That's not my favorite. But <laughs> no, I'm getting used to. I love iced coffee now. Really? Black ice, black iced coffee. Unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Bread. Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you could give your 20 year old self some advice, what would it be? Ooh. Okay. That's some lightning round here. 20 year old self. Wow. I think about this a lot, actually. And I think it is, you're allowed to do what makes you happy. Okay. Yeah. Good Good advice. Before we go, mm -hmm. how can people find you? If they want to contact you about something. Okay. Well, I am on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I have my work website, which you can reach me through that because uh, that's dawnsold.com. That's my name, D-A-W-N-S-O-L-D. Dot com. That's the fastest way. But I am on Instagram as the real Don Maloney, but no one can usually spell Maloney. So I can spell <laughs> that no one can spell McCoslin. So. Oh, I believe that a hundred percent. Yes. Um, so the real Don Maloney. Uh huh. M A L O N E Y. I decided to do that. Okay. Yep. That's on Instagram. That's Instagram. Yeah. And they can reach out to me that way. And okay. Facebook, if you, um, I'm, if you type in Dawn Smile, D A W N S M I L E, mm -hmm. Dawn Smile. Yep. Okay, so That's we have Dawn much. Smile, mm -hmm. Dawn Sold, and the real Dawn Maloney. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, my pleasure. And very interesting. I thought we were probably going to be talking a lot about vegan so i didn't know we were gonna be talking about intermittent fasting Twist. so that's that's good and so what it does tell me is just what you were saying you do what works for you and mm -hmm. and when something quits working try something else don't give up right because i was thinking okay i'm done you're never done all right well again thank you so much thank you for having me it's a pleasure <laughs> wow dawn is really made a lot of changes in her life and is willing to try different things to figure out what works for her. I'm, I'm really impressed. Yes. It's so difficult to sustain a weight loss in, in many ways, folks have found it harder to sustain a loss than to actually lose the weight to begin with. We all know how hard that is to yeah, start with. Definitely. But hats off to her. Yes, definitely. You know, one of the ways that I find helps me to keep the weight off is by exercising quite a bit. I think I was mentioning to you, Joe, I was going to try a different class. Oh, yeah, you did. I went to a different gym. I went with my daughter because she joined a different gym than the one I usually go to. Although I love my classes, it is challenging to try something with an instructor you've never met in a gym you've never been to. And this particular one was kettlebells. Oh. I, I like kettlebells because there are so many things you can do with them, and it's challenging. You know, I find that form is critical. Oh, definitely. The The woman that taught it today, <laughs> it was kind of intimidating before we even started. She had on a tank top, and you could see some shoulders on her that were so strong. But there were a couple women about my age in there, Good. mostly men and young people. But, you know, I, I felt encouraged by seeing someone else around my age. So it was a, a tough workout. Was it? But great. I mean, I, I'm still feeling it. You know, I can still feel the endorphins from doing it. <laughs> yeah. That's great. She used a lot of different moves that I haven't done before. A lot of combination moves, side lunges and raises and things like that, that I've done with dumbbells before, but not with kettlebells. And she also had a lot of cardio in between the actual kettlebell exercises. Okay. So mm -hmm. she'd get your heart rate up and then get back to the kettlebells. Right. Right. And a lot more push-ups than I would have expected. Oh, those push-ups. I know. I know, especially on a kettlebell arm. <laughs> oh, know? yeah. Yeah, definitely. But different things like sort of, um, you know, you have your hand on one kettlebell and your other hand on the floor and you do push-ups very slowly. I did them very slowly. Let me put it that way. And I did them on my knees because my arms were already wasted from doing all these right. lifts and things. I really feel strong. It was good. It was a good. real good workout. Excellent. I, I think there's a lot to be said for changing, going to a new class occasionally or having a new, tr a new 
leader, you know, shaking it up, doing something different is a really good way to see where you are. Yeah, it puts the butterflies in your stomach again, thinking, okay, I know I've done these other classes, and I know they're hard, and I can do it. But it it does feel good to know that you did something really hard, and you were able to come out on the other side, you know, that's great. Yeah. How about you? What what have you been doing exercise wise this this past bit here? Well, I went to my boot camp class on Saturday, which was, have you ever heard that song, Sally Up? No. Green, green Sally Up, Green Sally Down. I think it's a real song. Okay. You do things and you go up and then you go down when the song says Sally Up, Sally Down. And so you end up holding squats for a really long time, it seems like. Um, we did with push-ups. Anyway, it was a challenging class, and I, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. And then today, it was finally over 40 degrees here in Ohio, and I went for a run outside. I was bundled oh, up pretty nice. good, but um, it was kind of chilly, chillier than I thought, but mm-hmm. it was really nice. It was great to be outside, have fresh air. I felt like I like how a bear must feel coming out of hibernation, like (laughs) I'm just sort of lumbering along. (laughs) Right. That's great in February to be able to get outside and run. Yeah. So I did a basically a walk run. There were some hills. So I ran on some of it and walked on some of it. That sounds great. It sounds challenging, but still doable. So I have been doing a lot of gym days on Sunday, strength. So this was my first weekend with, you know, getting back to actually running on a mm-hmm. any length of time. So that was fun. It's so different being outside than being on a treadmill or doing the track or what have you, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. Looking forward to um, getting back to running more frequently. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners are in the same boat, too. You know, that they're thinking about running outside or bike riding outside and, you know, just getting ready to enjoy the warmer weather. Right. And I'm sure we have some listeners who are heading into the other side of like summer ending and. Yep. Winter. (laughs) Yeah. So we all have down seasons whenever it is. I think the secret is, is to try and figure out how to what you need, what you're going to do to get through those down seasons. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, yeah, some parts are more fun than others. Definitely. That's true. So I'd love for some of the listeners to send us their ways of getting through the tough seasons, because I suspect we still have a few more months before it's going to be consistently good weather. And I'm always looking for a better way. Right. Me too. So back to our talk with Dawn, if you have any top thoughts on vegan eating, or intermittent fasting. I'd love to hear that. And if you have any tips on your what you're doing fitness-wise right now in this time of year, share that too. You can reach us at our website, becomingle.com, or on Facebook. Or via email, chris at becomingle.com, or leave a voicemail at 330-970-6662. would be great to hear from you. All right. Well, thanks, Chris. You're making me want to go look for a good kettlebell class. So uh, thanks for sharing that. Oh, you bet. And I'll be out there running with you before you know it. Oh, good. All right. I'm looking forward to that. I'll hold you to it. Looking forward to next time. Yep. See you then. Bye now. Bye. Bye. 